Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be presenting two stories from Arrowwood. A forum board dedicated to drug experiences, personally submitted by both first-time and experienced drug users around the world. Let's get straight into it. The first experience is called 18-hour trip from one dose. It's about mescaline, and the username is Johnny. This report is regarding an amazing and mind-blowing mescaline trip I had the other day. I will call my fellow trippers and friends M and J for this story. This was my first ever mescaline trip, but I used to use acid, shrooms, weed, DXM, alcohol, coke, heroin, the whole nine yards in the past. I've always been attracted to the psychedelics the most though. M brought three capsules of mescaline back for the three of us to consume on a Sunday morning. I was pissed drunk the night before and was still drunk when I ate the pill at 11 a.m. Sunday. I also had two hours of sleep. Not the best physical conditions to trip, but my mental setting was perfect. Happy, looking forward to a trip. This was the first trip in a long time, almost a year. The pill itself was a clear capsule filled with light brown powder. Almost looked like heroin. Each pill had a different design stamped in red ink on it. Mine had a line around it. Jay's had an Indian design, and M's had a smiley face. M has tripped on acid twice and shrooms a few times with me and Jay, but me and Jay were the veteran trippers. Us three have also been smoking an insane amount of pot for the past year. So anyways, we smoked our usual wake and bake bowl and ate the pills. We were told they would jack us for at least 15 hours and they were intense. So we went off to the mall for the come on. We walked around outside when we got there and we all agreed that we felt the first twinges of our trips after only 10 minutes from ingestion. A slight dizziness and giddiness, definitely not from the pot. We are such bastards that pot barely does anything to us anymore. The come on was smooth and slow. I got a little nauseous around the 45 minute mark. M and J were eating at this time. The trip picked up and started to level off. Now things start to get intense. We're in the car smoking a bowl and my head starts to spin as the inside of the car seems to elongate itself hundreds of feet. Red and white patterns begin to appear in M's face and swirl around. The stuff made me high too. Like I had trouble walking straight. Never had that before from acid. A little from some really strong shrooms, but nothing like this. The waves were so intense they will wash over me every 10 minutes maybe. My visuals were the most intense I've ever had. More intense than six good liquids of acid. I watched the van morph and contort and melt completely into a parking lot. During this time, I experienced what I call synchronized hallucinations. My visuals were going along with my auditory hallucinations and my body hallucinations. The song Yet Another Movie by Pink Floyd will never be the same again. My euphoria level was through the roof, happier than rolling, on waves. My face and arms would tingle. The mind fuck was not too bad, but very enjoyable. We walked around the mall for a while and made complete asses of ourselves. Now, most people do not like to do this, but when I trip, I love to look at myself in the mirror. On this trip, I looked like a complete stranger and cartoon to myself in the mirror. Plus, my face was rapidly changing colors and was so distorted. My pupils were absolutely huge. Then we went to my house. Now, my parents were home but we just wanted to chill in my basement and watch some movies, glow stick to some trance, and enjoy our trip. 
I played completely cool in front of my parents, much to my surprise. When I was at the mall, I couldn't even say my own name. After four hours, I'd say we peaked. Then that's when we left the mall and it seemed like that was the hardest I had ever tripped. After about seven hours, we all felt like we came down. This is when we started chilling at my house like 30 minutes after we got there. Then about nine hours into it, we all got huge waves again that lasted until about midnight. My visuals were crazy. Leopard print is the shit if you're on mescaline. It moves, changes colors, shapes, flies around the room, etc. The doors and walls in my house would continually melt, warp, glow, grow, shrink, morph, and change colors too. Plus I was so dizzy the whole time and every big object like per se my entire house was rocking all around in my field of vision plus all the liquid and morphing visuals within that. I watched my street flow down into itself and into the cul-de-sac at the end of my street. The now night sky was full of what looked like heavy mist, colorful and swirling, and I could feel it on my face. That's another thing. I had incredible sensations over my body of heat and touch the whole time. Also, the sensation that my face was 10 feet in front of my body at the deepest depths of a wave. M said my face was warping around like mad. Jay said his visuals weren't as intense, which is strange considering I don't get good visuals on acid, and he does. As for the mind part, very happy, and I mind fucked myself a bunch of times with deja vu that actually I later realized never happened. My mind would just create these scenarios that never happened, and I thought they were deja vu. Incredible. I didn't get to sleep that night until about 3 a.m. I woke up after sleeping for about three hours and went to school, still tripped out a little. These pills were also 20 bucks a piece, but well worth it in my opinion. I didn't feel normal until two days after the trip. A wonderful trip though, very visual, and I would suggest it to anyone looking for something a little different than the acid or shroom trip. It was definitely my favorite trip ever, and I've had quite a few on numerous occasions. I think mescaline taught me how to read a trip. It gave me a lot of time to think about what just happened to me during a wave, because the in-between waves were pretty clear-minded. Still tripping nuts in between waves, but the mind became clear for a minute or two. It taught me that tripping is not to be taken so seriously, and to have fun with it. That's what it's here for. I enjoy looking into the deep spiritual stuff too, just in an entertaining way, not in a serious Buddha way. The second story is called, And Suddenly You Again. Story about DMT. The experience was submitted by the user, another human. I am writing this experience outline approximately two years after it happened, so I'm sure there are a few minor details that have faded since then. I will, however, do my best to recollect as much of that afternoon as I can. It was lightly drizzling outside, sun creeping through the clouds, stereotypical day between winter and spring. There was a subtle undertone of new beginnings in the air. The smell of petrichor as I walked up to my friend's house set the mood for what was to come. I am greeted by two of my buddies, one male and one female. I walk with them to their room, in which resides a large tank of healthy and beautiful freshwater fish. I sit down on the side of the bed, nervously shaking for what I was anticipating. My friend B could see I was nervous. We spent the next 20 minutes discussing my anxieties and my expectations. I knew what I wanted to get out of the experience, and I knew why I wanted these things. I wanted to see some sort of objectivity. I felt as though I was drifting from my core and needed some sort of knowledge that would assist me in becoming a better person. I had recently begun feeling more distant from family and was beginning to have a sort of existential crisis. 
I was an atheist and had no belief or disbelief in any deity or afterlife, so it raised many unanswerable questions that would make me feel uneasy. I wanted to feel more connected, so I decided to do some inward exploring. This is where DMT came into the picture. My friend B knew how to extract DMT from Mimosa Hostilis root bark powder and taught me how to do it. We did a pull slash batch the day before, so I knew exactly where this particular DMT came from. This got rid of any suspicion I could possibly have had. Before learning how to extract it, I did research on the substance and read experience reports. I wanted to go into this as overprepared as possible. Little did I know, it would not matter how much I knew about it, it would still be just as intense and flabbergasting. Back to the side of my bed, my friend B asks if I am ready. I tell him I'm as ready as I think I'll ever be. He puts a very small cannabis bud at the bottom of the bowl and delicately sets the white powdered crystal on top. He informs me that he will be loading the bowl and lining it for me, which puts me even more at ease. I put my mouth up to the pipe and he puts the lighter near the crystals. He's very careful not to burn anything, just melt and vaporize. I fill up the pipe and inhale. The taste and smell are ancient. Very plastic-like taste runs through my whole body. As alien as this is to me, I take another hit. This particular hit kicked things up a few notches. Objects became more vibrant. Matter was lightly pulsating and this electronic hum in the air became significantly louder than normal. I had to take about 20 seconds to let it marinate. As I sit there, I noticed that deja vu was starting to blend in with every moment. I felt as though certain human beings were starting to dissolve. I somehow took my third and last hit and B withdrew to give me room to lay down. The electronic hum became even more loud, as though it's always there and we are conditioned to not notice it. This strong vibration took away my sense of free will, which was a magnificent thing to observe. At first, these alien feelings made me a bit scared, made me want to undo what I did, but I quickly forgot about my feelings and became fascinated with what was happening all around me. I looked around the room slowly, watching objects fold in and out of each other. Colors I had never seen in this room were flowing like electricity. Golds, greens, reds, and unknown combinations of earthly colors were introducing themselves to me. I soon became overwhelmed and decided to lie down and close my eyes. My mindscape revealed itself to me to be related to matter. as it was folding in and out of itself in various dimensions. I watched infinite self-tessellating objects intertwine and glow gold and red. It was an ancient and beautiful pattern that I will never forget. At this point, I wondered why I was experiencing this. What happened next is something I half expected. I had read up on DMT experiences and knew many, if not most, people have interactions with beings. It was still not something a first-timer can mentally prepare for. These self-tessellating patterns began morphing into hominid shapes. Three beings appeared out of the infinity, what felt like right in front of me. In retrospect, it was inside of me. They still retained several qualities of my mindscape. They were still tessellated next to each other even though they seemed to be of a higher dimension and their faces were taking the form of something my mind could understand. I still remember their original forms, wide and happy grins, pitch black eyes, short bodies made of seemingly unknown energy to me. But this form soon became replaced with what my mind could make sense of, family. I saw my mother's face my stepfather's face and my uncle's face. They were without words telling me they loved me unconditionally and were happy to see me. It felt as though they were happily humming into my brain, trying to soothe, soothe me and let me know everything was all right. 
Once I came to peace with my experience, they folded back into my mindscape. I felt the DMT loosen its grip and I opened my eyes. Once I saw my friend's b and I instantly remembered that I had inhaled DMT. My sober mind started to rise and I could see things very clearly. I was shaking with excitement and was rushing through my previous five minutes so I could remember as much as I could. I started analyzing every feeling I had during my trip and tried to make sense of everything. As alien as the experience felt while it was happening, I could not shake the sense of familiarity once I came back. It felt like I had been there before a long, long time ago. I had come to a few conclusions about my experience at the time, conclusions that I still cannot shake. I felt as though the human condition slash experience is partially created or monitored by endogenous DMT. When I inhaled the DMT vapor, I was figuratively turning the frequency dial on my perception. The subtle hum I heard after the first hit was the sound of air particles. The sound air particles make when they collide and commingle. I felt as though humans had evolved to not hear the sound since it serves no purpose other than a minor annoyance. Another conclusion I came to was that our brains are programmed to take in certain input and turn that into a perceivable reality. By that logic, when I inhaled DMT, I was reprogramming my brain to use different energy as input. Energy coming from within instead of from the outside world. In my opinion, the beings I interacted with were a construct of the human psyche, possibly ancient. This would also explain why almost everyone who experiences DMT has contact with some sort of sapient energy or entity. This is where I will wrap up my experience in a nutshell. Beginning of spring, went to friend's house, discussed my apprehensive feelings with him, went over my goals in my head, wanting to become more aware and connected with things that matter, took three large hits in a time span of a few minutes. Objects morphed and folded, colors became more intense, deja vu became more frequent, free will dissolved, humming took over everything, nervousness inevitably subsided, saw the beauty of the human mind, witnessed and interacted with three mysterious sapient beings that communicated without spoken words, perceived them as family, realized how loving and awesome my family is, realized how complex the universe really is and how I need to be at peace with not knowing most things and realized how I need to value this moment to moment experience. Overall, a very positive and very intense experience and was my only time using DMT. I think the reason I had such a positive experience was a combination of the DMT being very pure, white crystals extracted by my friend B and myself, the weather being promising, my friends being quiet and mature, and my willingness to learn what I could from such a bizarre experience. I know I will use DMT again someday, but only when the circumstance presents itself in a proper fashion. Oh, yeah.